Right. It's like saying goodbye when I... I know it's not, I'm not leaving yet. There's still a little bit to go, but... I always feel once I reach this point that this is um, saying goodbye to this beautiful place. Peace. Beauty. Right, I shared with my sister Jude. My dad, Margaret, my sister. And spirits of people. And this is a beautiful place. This is what I remember here. It's been a good day. It's been a good day. But I always see that little junk. Just there's more. There's another junction yet, but that is the main one where I leave what I feel the main, the main beautiful little Eden place. Though the stream carries on round, but it's like you're, le you're leaving all that now. You can just think about that. You can only think about it now. Um, I can take it home and I can be sat on my desk and then I'll be thinking of this beautiful place. This beautiful place. Very beautiful. It's just a type of sadness I'm feeling though, because it's so beautiful, you know. Well, I always say I never don't see a deer when I come out. And I did see one, very start of the walk, but they are in hiding. And yet other people will come on. These are the people that got all the camouflage gear and get up at four o'clock in the morning, go looking for a hiding and all that. I don't do that. They can get the pictures of the deer, and they do beautiful pictures of them. I've never had. I've never come across a great big stag uh, for what for quite a while actually. And, I, and in those days I wouldn't have had a decent camera either. So I know I'm not going to see any now. This is rare. I mean, there could be one or two look up there somewhere, but we can't even see people. Do you know what I mean? I have been out since 11 o'clock this morning. And I saw one girl on a bike for two seconds. Two people in the far, far distance on top of the hills, far walking in the opposite direction. No one has passed me. No living soul has, anyway. I'm expecting to see some people as I get back here, but I'm so surprised I've seen nobody. No bikers, no kids out walking with their families. Um, I mean, it's, it's very protected, this place, for sure. But I expect you could come out another day and there'd be loads of people. There'd be groups of hikers. I mean, they all seem to keep it for the weekends, don't they? <sighs> Do you know, when I used to come here sometimes alone. When I, first, when I first started coming up here on my own, I used to be a bit scared. 
even when we were kids, we used to think that the trees had eyes and they could follow us, you know, things like that. And when I first came up here, I used to be a bit, a little bit, not of human beings. I don't know what I was scared of. It wasn't people. Um, I don't really know exactly what it was, but I don't feel scared of the trees or anything. I think it's because they've got gnarled branches and, you know, and you hear creaks and stuff like that sometimes. But maybe I should be scared. I don't know. I mean, things that used to, I used to think about, like, does the Black Panther live up here? But then I always think they don't come, they don't come out till evening. You know, you need to get back to the van. I always say, sorry I put that idea in my head, six o'clock is the witching hour. You need to get back. See, so I, I tend to do that when I'm out. I have a cut-off point. Not always. I've come back through here about seven, eight o'clock before the sun's going down. But most of the time, no, I get back. Now that route, at a steady, plus I did extra because I went down to the car parking area at Beacon Hill. That was extra. But if you want to do a circular walk, do it in reverse another time, say. You've got to allow four or five hours, I think, at a, st a slow s plod like I do. I mean, you see people out there marching. They're literally marching. Are they, I mean, are they, are they looking at anything when they're going along? I know we've all got to keep fit. And they say, oh, you don't lose no weight, you because you don't walk fast enough. <sighs> it's not all about weight. It's what you eat. And as long as you do give your heart some exercise. And I've had my arteries checked and they're not clogged. I ain't got, I've got good arteries, my, the, the cardiologist told me. They went right in. I watched it on the screen. An angiogram. I went, they went right in. And um, I never had no clogging. He said I have really good arteries. And it's probably helped by all the exercise I have done over the years. But then I did have bad habits. I used to smoke. I used to drink. I used to like me bacon butties. And I still like me cake, I'm afraid. I've given up most things. I, but I allow myself occasional glass of wine. Which is what I shall allow tonight when I get home with my salmon. I allow myself lamb chops. Now and again. Lamb chops are allowed. I cook, um, what I do now with the chicken, I cook it in the bag in its own juices. I don't put extra fat on it or nothing. I cook it in the bag. You, you buy these bags and you stick it in there, tie a knot. It cooks it in its own juices. It's succulent. I always talk about food at this part of the journey as well. I've done other walks when I've been walking back along here. I'm talking about food. And the thing is, I am a bit hungry now. I've been... I haven't... I didn't feel hungry when I was in the heat, to be quite honest. I had um, a bar of chocolate, a little wafer biscuit chocolatey thing, and a packet of cheeselets. Um... No, I haven't touched the orange. Yeah, that is all I've had all day. I've been out walking since 11 o'clock. It's 6 o'clock now. So for 7 hours, I've just had... I had a bottle of fruit juice, a small bottle of fruit juice. Apple and black, black, blackberry. I had um, a whole bottle of, a small bottle of water. I've just had a swig out of the big bottle. Oh, still three quarters of that left. Um, I've had a couple of sweets just to boost the glucose level. But I didn't really want to get my cheese out. Um, all the benches I came across were all in the sun. 
I mean, they might have been in the shade at one point, but when I got to them, they were all in the sun, baking hot sun. Um, so I didn't feel like that. Anyway, I'm going to be closing this video for this walk very shortly. What it is, and this is the last stages now of walking back towards civilization. We will have the roundhouse coming up in a minute. And there's a history to that, to do with the mill and all that sort of thing. Um, then we get on, you know, the roads are already, you know, the track's are already getting wider and all that sort of thing now, you see. Um, and once we start hitting what I call humanness, um, for example, back there is a camper van and quite often there's sheep in that field, domesticated ones. Um, <coughs> And I, I, I just can't believe there's no one out at all. I mean, I know, okay, a lot of people might have started at nine o'clock and I'd miss them. They got back to their vehicles maybe at two and they just weren't going the same. We never coincided. I'm sure there were people out. But I mean, it's evening now, still not a sign of anyone. I can't even hear any children. Like I said, all year round, you've got this place to yourself most of the time. So there's the stream trickling by. I have seen deer up here before now. I have seen deer. They do because there's water, you see. <laughs> if it is quiet, why shouldn't they? Why shouldn't they? wander about up there. Now they, te they tend to be right, usually right up on the top anyhow. They tend to be right up on the top. I've just seen a squirrel. If not, it was a very long rat or a weasel. Still going along now. I think it's a squirrel. It's gone now though. The humming of insects. Right then everyone. Over and out. That's it for today. July the 25th, 2018. The Holford Circular Walk, including um, Smith's Coombe, Beacon Hill, and then back to Holford via Shepherd's Coombe and some other coombs. Hodder's, Hodder's Coombe. That's right. This is Hodder's Coombe. This one now. I've done loads of video. I've done loads of photos. Some of you would have seen them before, but there's always something slightly different in them. And I've used over 16 gigabytes of video and photo footage. I'm using more now because I've got this battery charger. I just leave the video running like I am now. The stream is still going up and it's so pretty and there are various pathways that go off. I can hear a little bird. Somebody's about. The stream's trickling. There we go. There it goes. Is that the one that goes all the way down to East Quantock Head? Could be that it joins there. It's going somewhere in a hurry, isn't it? Could be, and out to sea. The same bit of water never passes again, apparently. It's all on a journey, the water. getting really hungry now before I'm gonna have a, I've got a flask actually I've got I bought this um kettle the other day that you could I've got other kettles when I've got the van plugged into electric I've got proper electric kettle but I've got this other kettle that you can plug into the um ignition you know the lighter thing but um it takes half an hour to get the water hot it takes ages 
you'd have to, you'd have to stick it on as soon as you got back and fiddle around. So what it is, I've brought. A I, I, it'd be handy for when um, I'm on a campsite with where I can't plug in, because sometimes there's not always an electric hookup. I've mainly got it for that reason. At least you could still have. You just have to plan it and put it on half an hour, knowing it's going to take half an hour for a cup, for two cups of tea. Um, I've got it for that reason, really, for times when you can't have a hookup. But I've got a flask. I've got some herbal tea. I'm just, I always start to feel a bit weary as well about now. I mean, I'd get my, I'd have a huge adrenaline rush now if a deer was to come and greet me and say, Hi, Sheila. Thanks for visiting. Goodbye. Do you know what I mean? If there was a deer now up here, I'd have a sudden energy rush. So like I said, we'll be at a gate in a minute and then definitely back to the Holford Green. Over and out.